Coming up, it's not just Boris Johnson who's broken the ministerial code. Here's 10 cabinet ministers who have proved unfit for public office. Before we get into it, please remember to like, subscribe and get notified of new videos. The Ministerial Code is an actual document available on the gov.uk website, but I've read it for you so you don't have to. Here are my top 10 current government ministers who have broken the code yet are somehow still in post. Number 1. Rishi Sunak broke the Ministerial Code by failing to declare his multi-billionaire wife's investment portfolio in the Ministerial Register. As the guy in charge of the money, Rishi than the Queen Sunak's blatant attempt to cover up potential conflicts of interests would have led to his dismissal in any previous government. But there's more. The £3.6 billion Towns Fund was set up as part of the government's supposed plan to level up the regions of the UK by giving grants to deprived towns. Section 1.3H of the Ministerial Code states that Ministers in the House of Commons must keep separate their roles as minister and constituency member. But an algorithm designed by Sunak to apportion the Towns Fund so happens to have given a large chunk to his own wealthy constituency of Richmond, Yorkshire. Scandalous. Number 2. Priti Patel, Home Secretary. Her name came straight to mind when I read section 1.2 of the Ministerial Code, which proscribes harassing, bullying or other inappropriate or discriminating behaviour. Accounts of Patel's bullying are well documented, and after the departure of senior Home Office civil servants of Philip Rutnam, an inquiry established that Patel definitely broke the Ministerial Code through a campaign of vicious and orchestrated bullying behaviour. Rutnam won a settlement of £340,000 plus undisclosed legal costs as a result of Patel's bullying, a sum that the taxpayer is funding due entirely to her misconduct. And don't forget, she has form. She was previously fired from Theresa May's cabinet after unauthorised and possibly treasonous meetings with Israeli government agents. Number 3. Michael Gove Section 1.3d of the Ministerial Code says ministers should be as open as possible with Parliament and the public, but Gove has regularly suppressed freedom of information requests. Earlier this month, Gove told the Commons, transparency drives everything this government does, prompting laughter among MPs on both sides of the House. Let's take a look. Well, transparency drives everything that this government does. That and a commitment to levelling up and making sure that our union is stronger. Gove has been blocking a new appointment to the civil service role of government advisor on ministerial standards, probably because of the government's secrecy over secretive large payments made to the Prime Minister and other ministers since last July. Number four, Matt Hancock, Secretary of State for Health and Social Care. Hancock has broken the ministerial code several times, particularly during the coronavirus pandemic. Section 1.3c of the code insists on honesty, yet in November 2020, Hancock told the House of Commons, In April, on schedule, we delivered the target of 100,000 tests a day. Full fact, the independent fact-checkers found the figure of tests actually processed never exceeded 82,000 daily, meaning the government failed to meet their target. And on corruption, Hancock's £30 million contract award to his neighbour and former pub landlord, among many other dodgy contracts to Tory donors and associates, surely means he should be in jail, not in the cabinet. Number 5. Robert Jemrick, Secretary of State for Housing, Communities and Local Government. Section 1.3f states, Ministers must ensure that no conflict arises or appears to arise between their public duties and their private interests. In June 2020, Jemrick granted planning permission for a £1 billion property development by Conservative donor Richard Desmond, who he'd had dinner with the previous week. In overruling a local planning inspector, Jemrick saved Desmond £40 million, which he would have had to pay in community levies to improve local infrastructure. Also, back on the Towns Fund, Jemrick allegedly did a deal with a subordinate within his department, Jake Berry, to grant money to Berry's constituency in return for Berry signing off a grant from the same fund to Jemrick's constituency. Shocking. Number 6. Dominic Raab, Foreign Secretary. The code states that 
Ministers are obliged to explain and account for the work, policy decisions and actions of their departments. But as Theresa May's Brexit secretary in 2018, Raab refused to give evidence to Parliament on Brexit negotiations. Raab decided that rules on a minister's duty to be accountable to Parliament simply didn't apply to him. And he got away with it. Number seven, Grant Shapps, Secretary of State for Transport. In 2015, it was revealed that Shapps had been employed under a fake name as a web designer, leading to possible conflicts of interest. The Ministerial Code of Conduct calls for full disclosure, but Shapps is one of several ministers on this list that seem to know they'll just get away with just ignoring the code. Number eight, Gavin Williamson, Secretary of State for Education. When he was Secretary of State for Defence under Theresa May, Gavin Williamson allegedly broke the ministerial code in leaking details of the UK's 5G infrastructure, putting national security at risk. Theresa May fired him, but Boris Johnson doesn't care if someone's committed treason. He appointed Williamson as Education Secretary, where he has presided over the exams fiasco and dithering and U-turns over pandemic policy in schools. Number nine, Liz Truss. Secretary of State for International Trade. Her name came to mind as soon as I read section 1.3 of the Ministerial Code. The Ministerial Code should be read against the background of the overarching duty on ministers to comply with the law and to protect the integrity of public life. In 2019, Truss approved the shipment of arms to Saudi Arabia as they were waging war in Yemen. The shipment breached an order by the Court of Appeal and Truss herself even admitted that she had acted unlawfully. But surprise, surprise, this war criminal is still in a job. Number 10, appropriately enough, Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister. Section 1.3c of the Ministerial Code says, it is of paramount importance that ministers give accurate and truthful information to Parliament, correcting any inadvertent error at the earliest opportunity. Here's the Speaker of the House of Commons, Lindsay Hoyle, earlier this month giving Blojo a right dressing down for misleading Parliament. All members of this House are honourable. They must take responsibility for correcting the record if a mistake has been made. It is not dishonourable to make a mistake, but to seek to avoid admitting one is a different matter. Johnson has told literally hundreds of lies since becoming Prime Minister, and many of these are listed here on the BorisJohnsonLies.com website. The Jennifer Arcuri affair is the latest example, where he's told multiple lies about a four-year affair, during which he spent taxpayers' money taking her on foreign trade trips and giving her government grants and sponsorship totalling £126,000. We are being governed by a bunch of lying, corrupt authoritarians who have been appointed to their positions not on the grounds of ability, but on their unswerving loyalty to Blojo and a dogmatic devotion to a Brexit at all costs.